Welcome to Journeys Through Sociology, a series of interviews with presidents of the International Sociological Association. I'm Lola Bey Bohanyan, and today our guest is Michelle Wibiorka, who was president of the ISA from 2006 to 2010. Dr. Wibiorka is a renowned sociologist and public intellectual in France, where he is a professor at the School for Advanced Studies in the Social Sciences and the director of FMSH, the Foundation for Human Sciences. He was a student of Alain Touraine, with whom he continued to work for many years, developing the methodology of sociological intervention, which aims at understanding the subjective rationale of actors and emphasizes an approach where sociologists and subjects produce knowledge together. He employed this methodology toward the study of social movements, particularly the anti-nuclear and student movements in France, as well as the trade union solidarity movement in Poland. Dr. Wibiorka directed CADIS, the Center for Sociological Analysis and Intervention, originally founded by Turin from 1993 to 2009. In addition to his research on social movements, he has also worked extensively on what has been termed the darker side of society, issues like terrorism, anti-Semitism, violence, and racism. And while few sociologists explore these fields, Dr. Riviorca has spent decades developing what he calls a concrete sociology of evil. He has countless publications, including 30 books, many of which have been translated into numerous languages. And in addition to his immense academic contributions, he is also known as a leading public intellectual in France, where he regularly engages in and provokes debate on important national and international issues. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Riviorca. It's a pleasure. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you. So we'd like to start today, uh, I'd like to start by asking you how it was that, that you came to the field of sociology. What was it that drew you and, and made you want to be a sociologist? There are two reasons. The first one is that my first wife was a student in sociology while I was a student in economy. And she was uh, doing things much more interesting than me. But the main point is in 72 or 1973, when I was finishing my PhD in economy, and my professor told me, ah, oh, you should read this book by Manuel Castells. I did not know who was Manuel Castells. And I read the book, which was called in French, La Question Urbaine, the urban issue. I don't know the English title. And uh, this book was, for me, wonderful. And in France at that time, we had a system where you had two, two kinds of PhD, the normal one and the one that we call state PhD, which is 10 years of huge, huge, intensive work and so on, after a normal PhD. Wow. So I visited Manuel Castells. I didn't have any idea of what he, who he was, what he was doing. And I told him, I want to make my state PhD with you in sociology. And he told me, great, you have a good idea, because I, had a, I wanted to study consumers, consumerism, uh, this kind of movement. He said, it's a very good idea, but my statute, at that time he was just maître assistant, uh, associate professor, does not allow me to be your supervisor. Let us visit Alain Touraine. Mm. We have very good relations, and I'm sure he will accept to be your theoretical advisor, and I will be the real one in charge of so, so I visited Turenne, and Turenne told me, well, okay, I like very much Manuel Castells. Your project is interesting. There will be just one condition. You follow Manuel Castells' seminar, and you also follow my seminar. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, of course. So this is how I started to become a sociologist with two great and wonderful professors. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, and, and so I guess we have your wife and, and Castells, Manuel Castells, to thank for bringing you to sociology. Um, you know, you've, you've had a, a career where you've worked on many, many things, including, you know, you worked on social movements, you worked on 
Um, also, as I said, a lot of what people would call darker issues like 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 terrorism and, and racism, which I imagine can be difficult as a sociologist to kind of delve into those for extensive periods. And so I, I'd like to ask you, I mean, is that a difficult, uh, you know, field to set for yourself? And what are some of the difficulties you faced in doing the work that you've done? Well, what is difficult is to work with people who have a very bad or dirty ideas and practices. Mm. But uh, out of that, the more difficult was not to work with these people, to make interviews with former terrorists or with racist people. No. The more difficult was my milieu. Because when you are working on dirty issues like terrorism, people look at you and say something like, ah, if you work on terrorism, maybe it is because you have a some uh, positive feelings mm. towards terrorism, this kind of thing. Mm. So it was difficult with my milieu, and at that time, in these, the late 70s and the 80s, in my country, many people were leftist or communist, or this kind of Marxism. Mm. And most of my friends were like that, and I was also experimenting a tension between being a sociologist, working with Alain Tourelle, not being a... Uh, uh, how can I say, revolutionary and so on, mm -hmm. and having all these friends, revolutionary, Marxist, and, and, uh, and, and so on. So there was a tension. At that time, it was difficult for me, but the truth is that uh, it was good also to live under tension. And, and within that, that, was it difficult? Your actual subject matter was also a difficult thing to, to be accepted in that milieu? No, it's not difficult when you know how to talk to people and when they understand when they understand that what you want is to understand what they say and what they have done or what they do. You want to understand. If they understand that you are not an adversary and not a friend, mm -hmm. you are somebody who is going to produce some knowledge, if they don't accept you, which is very often the case, if they don't accept you, it's not a big problem and many will accept you. Mm -hmm. So... And they will talk with you, and uh, no, it's it has yeah, never been. I never had a feeling of danger, for instance. Right. Ne never. But you know, when you are in front of somebody, and this person, for instance, tells you, "We should reopen gas chambers," so you are frightened. And this person says, "But not for Jews, for Arabs." Mm -hmm. oh. So it's difficult to. It, it, the situations are difficult. But if you try to be a sociologist, always, not a friend, not, a, not even not a citizen, a sociologist, then you can find uh, ways to, ways to, be to there. do it. So this work that you do as a sociologist that, that gives you a sense of, or an understanding of, of how people understand what they're doing in these contexts, in these dirty subjects, so to speak, how is it that you bring that then to a larger public? Because so much of your work is also about you know, unleashing this sociological knowledge into a larger public debate. So how, how have you been able to do that? Well, in my country, we, there is a real space, there has always been a real space for what you could call with Michael Borovoy public sociology. Mm -hmm. That is to say, sociologists write in newspapers, answer to journalists, go on TV mm -hmm. channels, and so on. Mm -hmm. So they I could have a space there, a public space, mm -hmm. so I could send articles to some newspapers, accept it, and then, for instance, during these years, the, the 80s, I, was, I, I had a column in Liberation, which is one of the main French newspapers. Mm -hmm. It was very easy, and I was not the only one. Mm -hmm. So this was not a problem. And, and on the other hand, uh, I was uh, in touch with some political actors. I have never been a member of any political party, but I have many friends in, in the left, to mm. say it like that. So when you can talk with political actors, when you can talk also with trade unions, with NGOs and so on, and when, when you can write in the media or, or go in, on TV programs, then you find your space. Mm -hmm. Let me add that I am not invited every night on TV and that I don't write every day a column for in the newspaper, but I can exist in the mass media, in this yes. system. So, and of course, 
So, you know, in the midst of all of this, Dr. Yorka, so, you know, running academic research institutes, doing all this sociological research, being a public intellectual, writing for newspapers, working with politicians, working with trade unions, in the midst of all of this work, somehow you also undertook the, the role of being president of the ISA, which is quite extraordinary. So how, how do you see that part of your, your career? And what were your goals for this? And what were your reasons for taking on that responsibility? Uh, it was a wonderful time. I liked it very much. Uh, I did not have any idea of being a president of ISA, but one day a, a kind of a search committee knocked at my door and told me you should be a candidate, and I was elected. So it was not a dream, or I mean, it, it, I did not prepare anything during, you know, people sometimes know when they are born that they will be uh, one day president or whatever. No. It was just uh, maybe four or five months before the elections that I had the idea, because I was invited, uh, to be a candidate. So I, I, when I was elected, it was because I had a program. And for me, the more important issues were not all in the program. For instance, when I was a president, I wanted absolutely uh, to have China becoming part of ISA, mm -hmm. which was not the case for different reasons, the main one being a diplomatic reason, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So I made my, so it was very interesting for me to make a kind of a sociological diplomacy. Mm -hmm. I was totally successful, but real progresses. Mm -hmm. Then my idea also was that we have many meetings when you have a big association like that. My idea was to make as much as possible these meetings having some content, some intellectual content. That we are not only here to say the budget is this and we should decide that this group should not uh, do this. And, and no, this is important. It's, but also have as much as possible intellectual or scientific debates among, debates. among us. Yeah. And my third also, great, uh, I was very happy to, to do that. I launched Sociopedia, an online encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. And today Sociopedia exists within... Uh, ISA with the help of SAGE and uh, it was for me a very, very interesting uh, moment also to, to launch this uh, new uh, uh, form of uh, writing and publishing. Yes. So I also visited many, con ah, many con countries because when you are president of ISA, you are invited. You're on a such. world tour, basically. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> so with colleagues all over the world, uh, it's very interesting and also uh, I was also very, very happy to have a very successful Congress in, at the end of my four years in Gothenburg. It was a very good moment also. Mm. And I might say that uh, if it has been so wonderful, it is also because there is a wonderful staff and a wonder, at that time wonderful people around me, including, of course, I must say her name, Isabella Barlinska, because she did a, a, a wonderful work. Yeah, wow. So, uh, Dr. Vivioca, the last question that, that I'd like to ask and uh, end with today is, you know, if, if you could go back and sociology would not be your profession, if you could be anything else, what do you think you might consider doing? If I were gifty, which is not the case, I would say a pianist or a magician. Uh, a pianist um, or a magician? Yeah, wow. a magician, because uh, I started learning piano when I was young and I had a wonderful professor and uh, I was not too bad but there was a moment when you had to choose what do you want five or six hours per day working on your piano or having friends going to parties and playing football soccer and so on well just imagine I was 15 or <laughs> but so maybe I don't remember where but somewhere Max Weber has written that the sociologist is often somebody who would like to be a politician, but who does not have the qualities to become a politician. And so sometimes I think I, I would have liked maybe to be involved in politics mm. more directly. But I know that uh, when you make politics, you must lie. Mm. You must be able to, to accept very heavy problems and so on. And I am not done for that. Yes. So... I so through have, sociology, you, you found ways to, to, okay. to do so without lying. Yeah, without lying and with some distance. 
a politician cannot be distant from from his con or her constituency, for instance. I, yeah. I'm not like that. So sociology is perfect. We are critical. We are reflexive. You can use any yeah. kind of vocabulary of that kind. We are not obliged to be directly involved. And I like this. I like to be involved, but as a sociologist. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Viviorca. It's been wonderful to have you. Thank you. Bye-bye. This has been another Journey Through Sociology with Michelle Viviorca. You can find the entire series of interviews on the website of the International Sociological Association. Mm -hmm.